Welcome to the channel Zidalova of Dr. Yaluka. To begin, please subscribe and tick the notification bell in order not to miss our videos. Thank you for joining. Hi everybody. Today we have chosen to answer to the following question. What is African traditional spirituality? In short, I can define African traditional spirituality as the how to get out of the cage of materialism. This soul was depicted by the ancient Egyptian, the ancient Kemites, as a bird hovering over a body. This means that spirituality is a freedom indigenous to you and me. And that freedom, spirituality, is symbolized by the freedom of the soul from the body. When you intend to make some errands, the first thing you do is to determine what you are going to buy. So it is important in seeking African spirituality to first know what is it. Firstly, you should know that there are two kinds of practices of African traditional religion, the divine and the human. The divine practice is based on the purification of thought and the power required there can be used only for good purpose. The human practice is based on the observance of rituals and the power required can be used for good purposes or for evil ones. This implies that different laws apply the divine involves the obedience to the commandments of God, while the human involves the observance of contextual ethics and deontology. When I speak about the commandments of God, people sometimes tell me, Doctor, the commandment was brought by the white people. I say, no. The Egyptian Book of the Dead is about the divine practice of religion. In that book, an initiate Osiris required claim the right to be a Osiris because he has lived a life of purity. So you have the notion of purification there. And you have in that book 42 commandments of God. Some people will say, oh, those are the laws of man, not the laws of God. Among the Congo people in Bukongo, the Congo religion, you have also the commandments of God. In the western part of the kingdom, they were called Kogo by the very name of the kingdom. These will be anomalous where the commandment brought by the Portuguese, by the white people, because it, it will denote a superiority of the black and among the Bantambu, one of the ethnics of the Congo Kingdom, the same commandment are called Rikondo Minza, which literally means commandments of God. So in the divine practice, there has always been, they have always been commandments of God and the notion of sin but not the notion of original sin. These two different kinds of practice involve two different kinds of intervening ancestors. In the divine, we have holy ancestors called in Bukongo, Bakulu Bamaza, the ancestors of water. Water symbolizes here purity. 
In the human practice, we have the, the ancestor that are that animate, you have the ancestor that animate nature. Oh. Called in Bukongo Bakuluban Tsepe. In a practical manner, African spirituality is about mastering the physical nature. How to transcend the limitation imposed on us by the physical body. You have realized thus far that there are two ways to achieve this. Through the sacre of holy ancestor, thanks to the purification of thoughts, or through the sacre of the spirits of nature, thanks to the observance of rituals. African traditional spirituality can be defined also as the awakening of the divinity that abide in us potentially. Why potentially? That divinity was reduced to potential state due to our own original bad use of our God-given free will. That divinity is called the Logos. In ancient Kement, it was called Ta at the celestial level and Horus at the temporal level. In Bukongo, it's, it is called Pinonza at the celestial level and Kimalungila on the temporal level. The logos is generally represented by the conjunction of the male and female in human being as in gods. That's why in many pent language, the right part of the body is called the male and the female part of the body is called, the, the, the left part of the body is called the female has to mean that there is a divinity, a divine dimension in human beings. In the divine practice, the Logos is awakened permanently, permanently through the purification of thoughts and is represented in our lives by the presence of all is divine spirits, the Bakisi, and by the presence around us of holy ancestors. Divine spirits in us and holy ancestors around us. In the human, the Logos is awakened through the observance of the ritual and is represented by the spirits of nature animating the initiates and by the illuminated ancestors surrounding him. For the progress of Africa, these two spirituality must work in synergy. The divine spirituality is the power of a minority and like and enlightening and opening the path to a majority found in the human practice of traditional spirituality. African traditional spirituality can be divine or human. It consists in awakening permanently or temporarily the divine power that is latent in you and me. African traditional spirituality is a means of transcending the limitations of corporeal senses between the divine and the human. You have a choice to make. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share. More on this subject can be found on my books available at Amazon.